What's going on everybody and welcome back. Well, if you followed the channel at all over the past, you know that I had some storage issues, which is why I bought the bus to use it as a shipping container because shipping containers at the time were crazy money, but they finally came down in price and I ordered one a few months ago, but it took a long time to get delivered, like just tons of weather delays, but it finally arrived. But during that time, a bunch of people had asked me, hey, why don't you just build an addition on the shop? Why don't you build a bigger lean-to or something with some doors to get all of your stuff out of the weather, blah, 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 all of that stuff, versus having one of these delivered out here, dealing with all the shipping and the weather and the space and all of that. Well, there was a video not too long ago on YouTube where a guy built like a stick built, basically like a little pole barn type of thing, a 20 by 20 garage just with Home Depot, Lowe's stuff off the shelf for a little around three grand, a little over three grand, which would have been a lot like that old lean-to that's fallen down. So let's look at the pros and cons of something like this versus something like that. Now, depending on where you live and zoning or whatever it is around your area, you might only be able to get away with something like this lean-to. This thing is old. It was never really built to withstand the test of time. It was just a shed when we had animals to keep you know, just some stuff dry. We never had the big tractor or a lot of the stuff that we've got now. So it was just kind of meant for agricultural stuff. So you still get a lot of moisture coming up through the ground here. It keeps the big chunks of snow off of things. It's not great at a lot of things. We've got critters in and out of here all the time. There's a groundhog family that's lived in that corner for over 20 years, something like that. They don't cause any problems but it's not a great structure as far as keeping stuff in good shape. So you get a lot of moisture coming up from the ground. You don't want to keep anything in there that you care about. Now this thing on the other hand is a totally different beast. It is super long. It is super heavy. Uh, it has to be delivered while well, they deliver it on a pickup truck like a with a fifth wheel. It's just a dually ram with a trailer on it. So it's a pretty long, you know, whole thing all together just to get out here. This weighs a lot. Um, so that is, you know, the downside of one of these is just the, the amount of space it takes to have it delivered and weasel it into whatever area you want. But the benefits are that this is a wind and water tight unit. So once it's all sealed up, no rain, no snow, no nothing, it always stays dry. So that's the, the benefit over something like this with a dirt floor, especially here in Michigan where it's always wet. Out in like Arizona, you might not have that issue or whatever. But one of the downsides that I've heard about these things, which I haven't encountered yet, is a lot of people say that they'll sweat on the interior, like on hot days, you know, or when it goes from morning until noon, where it's chilly at night, and then it gets warmer, you know, during the day, you'll get a lot of condensation on the sides inside, and it'll drip down and whatever you got inside gets wet. I haven't heard anything like that in this area. I've talked to a few people that, that do have them. And they said that they didn't have any issues. So other than that, it is a completely sealed unit with the exception of one thing. That right there is the only vent on the entire container. So that little tiny area right there is the only way that this whole thing can breathe. Just that one little tiny cutout, which I believe is like a little slot about that big. And that's it. So that just basically lets the, the container equalize when it's on the ship or it's daytime or nighttime or whatever. But let's go inside and take a look. This one is a little bit crooked, so the door does have to be kind of pried open uh, with a crowbar right there because it is a little bit twisted. Uh, sorry, I've torn all the ligaments and tendons in my wrist, so I'm finally off the rigid brace and I'm on the soft brace, but I still can't do a ton with this hand, so bear with me. Inside, it's pretty spacious. We've got a lot of hooks and stuff up at the top, so you can hang a bunch of stuff from that. I don't know what the ratings are on a lot of this. You guys can let me know in the comments. I would imagine they're pretty hefty. Those look like they're three eighths at least. Hooks uh, up there, pretty heavy duty. Um, this was one of the cheapest storage units or shipping containers that you can buy. Uh, that's why there's a lot of repairs and stuff. This one is just considered a storage unit. Uh, wind and water tight or weather tight or whatever they call it. Uh, it's basically the cheapest one you can get. I just did spend a little bit more money to get the nine foot ceiling. Other than that, there's nothing special about it. 
It does come with some repairs here and there, which is why it's considered just, you know, the base model or whatever, but there's tons of room. So I've been storing some parts in here little by little. Uh, we've had a lot of rain, a lot of crappy weather, some snow, and there hasn't been a drop of water inside of this thing at all. So it can hold a lot of weight. You can drive a forklift on this. It's all hardwood flooring, super thick. I think the weight on this container itself is almost 10,000 pounds, something like that. So you definitely got to have the space for it. Uh, this is on crushed limestone right here that I brought out, but apparently there's a shortage on crushed limestone this year around my area. So I was only able to get what I have. Uh, you can see how much water there is, but other than that, it's a pretty nice unit. Other than having to, you know, put down some type of a base for it, you can see it's got an opening there. The plus side is critters can't get in. So the bottom of it is all steel, if I'm not mistaken. And then the flooring is just made, you know, it's just laid down on top of all the steel, but critters can't chew their way in it. Whereas anything out there, is guaranteed to have mice and rodents and you name it, whatever, squirrels. Anything that you put inside of one of those is going to be, you know, rusty and ruined by critters. Now, again, they said that uh, that one thing, that 20 by 20 garage, was a little over three grand, three grand, something like this. These containers, this one delivered, was just over $2,600. So not too bad for what it is. You know, it does have some repairs, a little bit of rust here and there, but I don't have any issues with it. I've heard of people bringing power in here, putting a junction box up in the front, using these whole things as, you know, workshops. They build houses out of them. They do all kinds of crazy stuff with these shipping containers. So it's definitely nice. It can withstand the snow loads here. Everything's all good. So. Why would you want to get one of these things and have it brought out to your house versus building something like that? So my decision was pretty easy. Price, protection, and mobility. So this thing is cheaper than it would have been for me to build it. So that guy that built that 20 by 20 with the dirt floor, he did all the work himself. This was cheaper than he paid for all of his materials alone, not including any of his labor or anything like that or permits or whatever, this thing just shows up, it's ready to go. All right, protection, it's dry, it stays dry. You can see all the water that we've got out here. Detroit is built on a salt mine. All of our water is really salty. It's got a ton of iron in it. It's gross. Anything that you store outside, you know, we're really close to sea level here. You know, Michigan is a glacial plain. It's just a big old flat area, kind of like Florida, sorta. So we get a lot of water. We get a lot of groundwater. You can't put anything you care about outside or it'll just get ruined. Other than that, if I ever wanted to move this thing, I just hire the company. They come out here with their trailer. They pick it up, slide it wherever I need it to go. There you go. Kind of like the bus, but more expensive to move. That's it. So essentially, I like this idea. It works good for me. I'm curious to, let, uh, to know what you guys think. What would you go for? Would you go for a shipping container or would you build something, you know, obviously nicer than that? but something permanent, a permanent structure to keep all your stuff in. But in the meantime, I'll take you inside and show you some of the space that I've freed up. Well, I don't know if you can tell just from the video, I don't know if you've watched my channel or not before, but you can maybe tell that I've got a lot more room in here now. This whole corner has been moved out to um, the shipping container. That's kind of where I got injured moving all this stuff. But now I've got some stuff just stored over here temporarily. Stuff like this, like the 306, this is a good running complete engine. I can't store this thing outside in Michigan or it'll just become ruined uh, with just the humidity and everything. So that's gotta be protected in a you know controlled area. So I want that to go out there. And then there are certain things that are kind of borderline. This is a blown up four liter that I got out of my Jeep originally. Uh, I, it's still blown up and needs to be rebuilt, but it's not something that I want just to go to, you know, go to crap sitting outside in the weather here so you know it's a decent core this is a one year only 1956 265 for a gm like a tri-five thing you know it's a tri-five chevy 
So that's a good core for somebody if they needed it. I don't really want water sitting in the cylinders or humidity coming up and just soaking it and ruining the crank and all that, which would definitely happen if I just had it sitting outside under the lean-to. Then the core support, that's a 55 core support, um, you know, 55 Chevy. You can't really leave that out. And then this is a freshly rebuilt 302. It's just a mild build, but that's all fresh machined. I can't sit that outside of Michigan or it'll just be destroyed in months. So you can see there are things that I need protection from the elements. And uh, that's why I went the shipping container route just because it's weather tight. So that's it. I'm curious to know what you guys think. Uh, what route would you have went? Would you have built an actual permanent structure on your property? Uh, would you have went the way that I went and just got, you know, a shipping container that doesn't look quite as nice or whatever? But let me know in the comments below what you guys think. Also, Merry Christmas. Yes, yeah, I think it's Christmas Eve today. I don't know when this video is going to come out, but Merry Christmas to everybody. Ho happy holidays or whatever, whatever you guys celebrate. Other than that, thanks a lot for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. I'll catch you on the next one.